Hi, this presentation is going to cover APA citations and references, the third overall aspect of um, APA. So, when to cite. We want to cite works of those individuals whose theories, ideas, or research have directly influenced our work. Um, we want to cite those individuals who may provide key background information, support, or dispute our thesis or offer critical definitions. Remember, it's key to cite or to not admit people who disagree with you. That, that doesn't make sense in a research paper. The whole point is to explore all of the available information and see how you can support your theory with what you have, even with those who disagree with you. In addition to crediting the ideas of others that we uh, see, um, or that we use to build our thesis, we want to provide documentation for all the facts and figures that are not common knowledge. Now, what is common knowledge? Common knowledge is information that can be found in three or more reliable sources or that someone who is an expert in the field would readily know. So if you are an expert in IT and you're writing a paper about net neutrality, Maybe I don't know anything about net neutrality, but knowing that your field is IT and you're an expert in your field, you don't need to cite information concerning net neutrality because you should know that information even if I don't. Also, uh, commonly information that's considered common would be, say, that the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. Maybe you have to look that up because you don't remember the date, July 2nd. Um, but Still, that's considered common knowledge because it's something that we all learn in school at some point or another. Plagiarism, quoting, and paraphrasing. Plagiarism is the act of presenting the words, ideas, or images of another as your own. It denies authors or credits, creditor of content, the credit they are due, whether deliberate or unintentional. Plagiarism violates ethical standards in scholarship. This comes from the American Psychology Association, published in 2020 on page 174. See, I cited. Um, in order to avoid plagiarism, you want to take careful notes as you research, keep track of your sources, and cite those sources according to the APA 7th edition guidelines. Quoting um, is basically when you take a direct quotation, um, it reproduces words verbatim from another work or from your own previously published work. Um, and you can see here, this is a direct quote that I took from the American Psychology Association. You always want to include the author, the year, and the page number of where the quotation either, I'm sorry, of the quotation, either at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. As you can see in the example above, I did mine at the end of the sentence. You might have noticed the term self-plagiarism. So self-plagiarism is when you submit something you have previously written for another class or for a different assignment. In terms of schoolwork, it's when you take something that was previously turned in and um, or something that you submitted previously for the same class. Um, say you're taking World Lit again for the second time and you wrote a paper in that first class, you cannot submit that same paper again because you've already submitted it, you've already received a grade. You have to make changes to it. Otherwise, that would be considered self-plagiarism. Now, occasionally your instructor will let you use a previously submitted assignment, but you must get written permission from the instructor who assigned that original assignment, and you must get permission from the current instructor to use a previously submitted work. So you, you got to work on both angles, and I would highly suggest that you get it in writing and you keep it in writing so you aren't accused of plagiarism later. Paraphrasing. A paraphrase restates another's idea or your own previously published idea in your own words. Paraphrasing is an effective writing strategy because it allows authors to summarize and synthesize information from one or more sources. It focuses on significant information and compares and contrasts relevant details. You should try to paraphrase more than you use direct quotes. You must always provide credit from where you paraphrase. As I did in this example, this is a direct quote, but you, same thing. You're going to include the author's last name, the year of publication, and the page number of where that paraphrase came from. And your reference list. This is the end of, of our document. So there are four elements for writing your um, reference list. You have the author, the date, the title, and the source. For the author, you want to invert the author's name. You include the last name and then the first initial and middle initial if you have it. 
uh, you use a comma to separate multiple authors. So if you were citing something from me in your reference list, it would be Mersh, comma, D, period, M, period. Um, if you don't have an author, then you use the title of the work, or if it's a corporation name, then you, you would use the name of the corporation, like I did in the previous slide, citing the American Psychology Association. The key thing to remember is that the date should not be the first piece of information that we see. When we move to the date, um, we want to use as much of the date as possible. You must always include the year, and that should always be the first piece of information. But if you have a month, or if you have a day, month, and year, you would include all of that. It would be, for instance, 2020, comma, July 19. If you don't have a date at all, nothing, you might want to question its reliability, but you can also include the abbreviation N period, D period, which stands for no date. Uh, in reference to title and sources, which are points three and four, for article titles, for book chapters, etc., you don't want to italicize or use quotation marks. We capitalize the first letter, any proper nouns, and the first letter after a punctuation. For journals, magazines, newspapers, book titles, etc., you want to italicize the title and use title case. Include the volume number, which is italicized, issue number, page range of the article, and the applicable DOI or URL if it, that is available as well. Random little tidbits in, in reference to APA uh, citations. Do not include titles for authors in the in-text citations or in the references page. So if the person who wrote it is a doctor, doesn't matter. We don't need to have doctor in that title. As I just stated, if there's no date, use the abbreviation ND. With in-text citations, use only the year of publication, not the full date if you have it. If there are no page numbers available for direct quotes or paraphrasing, then you want to use a paragraph number instead. Anything cited in text must have a full source in the references page. And finally, this big thing is that Wikipedia is not considered a scholarly source and it should not be used as a legitimate, legitimate source for research. You can start there. You can go to Wikipedia, see what they have to say, go to the links that they typically include after the article and start your research from there. But do not cite Wikipedia in your references page. Do not cite Wikipedia as a source in your paper. It will Basically, I won't grade your paper. I'll give it back to you and give you a couple days to fix it, and then and then you're out of luck. So just bear that in mind. Here is our reference for it. Uh, the information I presented in this presentation comes from the American Psychological Association, published in 2020. It's a concise guide to the APA style, the seventh edition, and here is the DOI. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.